Thank you, Pankaj. Uh, first of all, I have to thank you uh, for being the fulcrum of this wonderful panel discussion on a topic that has rarely been discussed in this part of the region. I think he needs a round of applause for that. And as is his, my wont on a beautiful Sunday morning, let me go back before going to his question to my own mischievous uh, self. Uh, we all had the pleasure and privilege of being escorted to the dais by Jonali Das, Chakraborty Sahab, Hajarika, Aluwalia, and myself. And this guy who has been talking about liberalism all the time, probably he has to go an extra mile at home because he was not escorted to the dais by Jonali Das. So this is an observation on a Sunday morning. In fact, I was waiting for uh, Dr. Chakraborty to speak because as a social commentator, it would have been far easier for me once a bureaucrat or a politician speaks, then I will pick up some of the things and try to deplore and decry and denigrate few of the things. But uh, being a very adroit and astute bureaucrat, and I respect you, it's on lighter vein, not because of your seniority, only because of the fact that there are few like you, despite their other restrictive formalities and confines, you have been trying to do so much for the state, and I salute you for that. But having said that, we have already heard about the experience of Hazarika. We have already heard about what Alu Alia had given some beautiful data to buttress the point that why these things are very, very important. Before going to Ponka's question, I think one backdrop we have to understand in the context of Assam, Northeast, and probably Eastern India. Wealth creation is never given that kind of importance in this part of the region. When I say importance, the legal legitimate way of importance. You see a big building, you pass by, you make a comment off the cuff, Kurbat Mariles again. This is, this is the general refrain of Assamese people. Wealth creation, wealth creators like Bolanath Borua, wealth creators like Hemendra Prasad Borua, and there are many. Bhaskar Hazarika now is doing. We do not, we give them the donation book before Hongkor Dev, Jayanti, Durga, Puja, Bihu, but we do not try to respect them. So this is the backdrop, this is the social milieu in which when we talk about liberalism, and entrepreneurship development, I think all those things we have to keep in mind. Secondly, and most importantly, liberalism is very, very important. In fact, I wrote a monograph criticizing or critiquing the Marxian theory, and that became very controversial in the year 2013. Whether Marx sounded the death knell of communism, that was the title of my book. So I was a liberal all the time. I, I always felt that I am I don't, go, I don't want to go into the academic debate of classical liberalism, neoliberalism, and other stuff. But I thought I was a liberal. But now, I am having some doubts about liberalism. And that too, I don't know, Pankaj, it would have been better had he been there. But I think definitely he will get the crux or the essence of what I want to say. Two things. Liberalism had to be all-encompassing to a great extent. I don't say to the full extent. Because economic liberalism about whom Hazarika has spoken, about whom Ahlu Aliyah has spoken, and probably I don't know what Dr. Chakraborty will speak. But one thing is very clear, economic liberalism is very, very important. And Pankos is also very, very passionate about that. But in a country, in a society, in which social illiberalism, the shrinkage of the space for debate, discussion, and dissent has been reducing in the last few years, where will we go? I think that's an important question, and it's not my observation. This is not Moyur Bora's observation. You just go to the verdict of Mr. Joseph and Mr. Hrishikesh Roy, who happens to be from Assam. That's not very important, where he hails from. They're all Supreme Court judges, and day before yesterday, what they had to say about what's happening in the country or few of the states in the country. They had to tell that about hate speech and other things, the Suomoto action had to be taken by the state. I know. I know I don't want to embarrass like bureaucrats and other things because I know the kind of restrictive, I said the straight jacket or confines they had to work. I do not find fault with them because finding fault is very, very easy. But I mean to say if economic liberalism regarding which or in which or about which all those things are interlinked, if social liberalism is not there, if on the other hand we see a string case Okay, we'll not go into India being downplayed in many of the indexes because that is controversial. Even Chetan Bhagat, despite we know his political leanings, he tries to hide at times. But we have seen in Times of India two, three days back he has written. But 
Having said that, okay, some of the ratings of the India is not proper. It was not scientific. I'll be very happy. I'm a proud Indian. For me, the Indian constitution, the ethos of the freedom struggle and the Indian constitution reigns supreme in my mind. For me, that is the sacrosanct document, not any religious text, when I come out of my home. At home, it's a different thing. It's a private affair. So my Pankaj, what I was trying to say, social liberalism, if you cannot ensure, you means all of us, the conscious citizenry, the conscious section of the society, or even some of, we, some of us, we may not be able to speak truth to power because of our position, because of many other things. But those who are in, why they are compromising all the time? What, what sort of lessons they have drawn from the wonderful tenets of liberalism when they refer to John Stuart Mill, the father of the classical liberalism, when they refer to John Locke, when they refer to Montesquieu, Rousseau and all, who said before French Revolution that middle class mind is an asset, but middle class mentality is a liability. We all of us Indians now, majority of the Indians, I want to go and stick my neck out and say, and I, I, I don't, I, I'm not, if I'm wrong, I'd be very happy. I would, I would, I would withdraw my statement without having any, court, any sort of embarrassment at my end. But I, I am very sorry to say that social liberalism is on the way in the country now. That's my feeling, that's my observation. I have not done any academic research on that, but that's what I feel. Having said that, having said that, that in the country, in the state, we do not respect the wealth creation by legitimate means, what I, what I initially started. Secondly, I said that there's shrinkage of public space in the country now. In that context, how do you take this forward? It brings us, or it takes us back, I think he was in US to the Republican Party of United States of America. The Republicans, majority of them, they will be socially very, very conservative. What is their, what is their view on the reproductive rights of the women? What they are telling about abortion? What is the verdict of the US Supreme Court? All those things, the tenets, the, all those philosophy or the principles, or the narrative is very, very strong in the minds of the US, those people. That we can see, and now on a lighter vein, that's why I remember the famous Republican uh, President of United States of America, because I am becoming very, very serious, although I started on a lighter tone. And I think this, this needs to be discussed very, very seriously, but some amount of humor and some amount of fun is also required. Because Ronald Reagan, the famous Hollywood actor who became the President of United States of America, he was assassinated, he was about to be assassinated, he was gunned, and at that time he was not fatally wounded, but he was wounded seriously. When he was wheeled into the operation theater, then he said, see his sense of humor. His wife was eagerly waiting, Nancy Reagan. He said, darling, I forgot to duck. I forgot to duck, that's why I got hit. Secondly, he said, all the doctors are waiting that Potas, the President of the United States, is being wheeled into the Operation Theater. And all the doctors, he said, I hope you are all Republicans. <laughs> Sense of humor while he was being wheeled into the Operation Theater after being sought. So that is also required. But the problem with India, I find, I'm just going to address the general issues. The problem with, we do not find Ronald Reagan kind of leader in India. I don't say about the present dispensation, maybe from the, I, we found because lambasting and lampooning Nehru has become a habit, but Nehru had a terrific sense of humor. As an SMEs, I have got so many things I can, I can complain, I have got grouses, I have got grouses against Nehru, not because of 1962, this is wrong. What he said in 1962 was wrongly misinterpreted. But when he came to in, uh, Assam before 1947 and what he did at the time of grouping, we are rescued only by, because of Mahatma Gandhi's intervention. So I'm not going to Nehru, but Nehru had a sense of humor. He said when he was a prime minister that black hair, gray hair should be respected and black hair should be suspected. I'm not saying anyone that you respect me because I have some strands of gray hair. But, but having said that, I feel, I feel this liberalism, all this data, I, I agree with that. I agree with that. But my last point, Pankaj, would be, and I, I, I'll definitely request on this, uh, Dr. Chakraborty also, to highlight, if we can, I think these are somewhat anodyne points I'd like to make. If liberalism is the panacea for all the ills, forget about social, what I have spoken about social, what we have seen, the toxicity and all other things, forget about that for the time being. We are in the hallowed auditorium in Vivanta by Taz. There is no toxicity, let us presume, today. Again, it's a beautiful Sunday morning. My question is, when the migrants 
in millions returned during that COVID time, what would have happened had we had a truly liberal, economically liberal, fine, socially or politically liberal dispensation also? Would it have made any difference? Point number one. Number two, we are all liberal, but when our kids want to go to Bangalore and Delhi in the month of June, and when the air fare skyrocket and it goes up to 24,000, 40,000, we all become votary of regulation. So is it a duplicity or double standard on our part? That also we have to ask ourselves, number two. And number three, that's the problem. I don't, I will speak extempore, I wrote something, I don't know where I wrote. There is another point, there is another point I wrote that, uh, oh, the COVID bills, the medical bills, all across India, initial period, was it not cheating or fleecing? Well, creation is fine. But in the, at the initial, try to remember, before Delta or in the, that Delta time, one and a half years back, what the prime, most of the majority of the hospitals all throughout the country, what they have done. So are we fit enough, character-wise, the Indians? Are we, we able, like if proper, that classical liberalism has been given, that is that is become our milieu in that ecosystem, to what extent we'll be able to deliver what is expected from the citizens of this country, for whom, again, I say the ethos of the freedom movement and the principles enshrined in the Constitution is the sole bedrock of their existence and their aspiration. That's my question. Thank you. I know I ended up asking questions to Ponkos. Again, uh, I, I'm sure it's not only for Ponkos, for Dr. Chakraborty, all other fellow panelists, and also for you. And thank you for being, at least, I have to thank you for your beautiful smile. Metaphorically speaking, the smiles are always beautiful. Thank you.